Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today we are thrilled to have with us a very special guest, Nick Lardakis, president of the American Hellenic Institute. Nick, welcome. Good to be with you, George. Thank you. Nick, you know, we've known each other for, gosh, I don't want to age us, but uh, several decades now, and you still look like a teenager. So um, and my job here today is to embarrass you a bit, but to really say that you are leading the way when it comes to Hellenic American issues and the importance of the Eastern Med globally, geopolitical stability, and all of the incredible areas that you're working on. And today you have a very special guest, I know. But before we get to that, I want to say how important it is to have stability in a region. And what happens when you have that stability in a region is you have confidence. Confidence by the public, confidence by travelers, confidence by companies, and confidence by governments in working together. And so we saw that with a billion dollar investment by Microsoft in upskilling and training in Greece that's coming up. And none of that happens by accident. You need to have that stability that I think you're going to be talking about today and the importance geopolitically of Greece from a global standpoint. And so I'm really Always excited to hear about these issues, but I, I just want to say, when we talk about global leadership, you are the definition of global leadership. You've been working so hard, so hard for so many years through the prism of American interests on behalf of you know, what's happening in Greece for so many years now. And so I'd love for you to introduce and talk maybe a little bit about what you're looking forward to in this interview. Well, thank you very much, George. It's always a pleasure to work with you and your team. And certainly, uh, I can always re repay the compliment because if you, if I look young, you, you and your wife look like you're still teenagers. Uh, so I congratulate you on your very good genes. But uh, no, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, as you know, I've been 34 years uh, in this job, and I believe very strongly in the, in the strong U.S. Greek U.S. Cyprus relationship because it serves first and foremost. U.S. geostrategic interest in the region. And Greece, along with Cyprus, are faithful uh, partners and allies regarding the promotion of these interests, and not just on interest, because countries base their relationships a lot on interest, but in this case, there's also value added as well. The values of Greece and the United States are also mutually inclusive of each other. So that makes it even a much more stronger relationship. So with that, I thank you very much, and it is an honor to be here today and to uh, moderate this power chat with the Minister of National Defense of Greece. Fantastic, Nick. Take it away. We look forward to hearing from the Minister and to hopefully being in Greece next year in person for this event. I look forward to that. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name again is Nick Larigakis. I'm president of the American Hellenic Institute, and it is indeed my pleasure and honor to welcome you here to the IDGen Global Leadership Summit for this power chat with the Minister of National Defense of Greece, Mr. Nikolaos Panayotopoulos. I would like again to express my sincere appreciation to George Sifakis and his team at the Global Leadership Summit of IDGen for the privilege and honor to address this esteemed audience during this occasion. Please allow me some opening comments for context. Greece prides itself as a vanguard of Europe, a linchpin of regional stability and security. The fact has been echoed by US, current U.S. Ambassador to Greece, Jeffrey Payet, who has stated, and I quote, the United States sees Greece as a pillar of stability in this region. We see Greece as an important partner, not just because of the way that we work together, for instance, our military forces in Suda Bay, but also the way in which Greece is deepening its partnership with American friends in the region. However, Greece also is the center of an arch of instability. Greece faces daily acts of aggression, provocation, and threats at the hands of a fellow, a fellow NATO member, Turkey. In addition to all the other malign influences that are pervasive in the Eastern Mediterranean, Greece is a frontline state against terrorism. Greece joins with its allies such as the United States and NATO partners, to neutralize or combat these malign influences in the Eastern Mediterranean and broader region. The United States correctly has recognized Greece's 
as a pillar of stability. A renewed mutual defense cooperation agreement, joint military exercises, bolster military construction funding at Suda Bay, and a boost in investment to Greece's international military educational training program, or IMET, as it's called here in Washington. All demonstrate enhanced defense and security cooperation between the two longtime allies. All of these measures taken root under the watchful eye of our guest, Defense Minister Panayotopoulos. Greece is also an important player in international commerce, shipping, and trade. Further, Greece possesses tremendous potential as an energy hub. Future U.S.-Greece economic relationships that pursue commercial partnerships and opportunities for more U.S. investment in Greece must be encouraged and fostered. All of this and more is possible in a Greece that is secure and a Greece that has already demonstrated it is economically and politically stable. And its value is a trustworthy and dependable ally. And thanks in part to public servants like such as our guest today, Defense Minister Panagiotopoulos. Allow me a few words regarding our honored guest. Minister Panagiotopoulos was born in Kavala, Greece. For those of you not familiar with the geography, it's in the northeast corner uh, of the country, close to Turkey. He graduated with honors from Athens College in 1984 and went on to study economics and international relations at the University of Pennsylvania, where he, there he became also a very avid Philadelphia sports fan that he and I have that in common. And of course, a lot of frustration along the way. He also studied law at the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens. Mr. Panagiotopoulos completed his two-year mandatory military service in the Hellenic Air Force. He has worked in the private sector and he's also practiced criminal law in his native Kavala. He was elected as a member of the Hellenic Parliament with the current New Democracy Party, the ruling party, out of the district of Kavala back in 2007. He served as a member of the Parliamentary Committees of Commerce, Greek Diaspora, and Defense and Foreign Affairs, including many others. He is an avid sportsman where he also represented Greece with the junior national water polo team in 81 and 82. It is really indeed a great pleasure for me personally to have here today on behalf of the Global Leadership Summit of IDGen, the Minister, the, the Minister of Defense of Greece, Nikolas Panitopoulos, and a very close friend. Mr. Minister, welcome, and we give you now the opportunity to, to have, make an opening statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me say how we're going to have to be able to communicate with you in the context of this uh, important uh, uh, teleconference, uh, reaching out to such a distinguished audience and in, in an effort to communicate uh, uh, a few basic facts and arguments uh, on behalf of uh, uh, my country's, Greece's role in uh, the general picture of uh, uh, promoting peace uh, stability and security in the volatile region of the Eastern Mediterranean. I'd like to particularly thank Mr. Mr. Sifakis uh, for having us here, of course, uh, Mr. Nikos Larigakis, among others, for the kind words uh, he said about me um, and quite an accurate statement on on what a frustrating situation is to be, to be a, a Philadelphia sports fan, among others. But uh, then again, um, let me let me uh, move straight into uh, the topic of discussion and uh, and elaborate from there. Well, you all know how uh, um, strategically important the uh, Eastern Mediterranean region is. Uh, Greece stands as a true uh, pillar of stability uh, and net security provider in that region. We do believe that. Uh, um, being in a state of uh, uh, regional security, secure, working toward establishing um, a secure environment is a direct prerequisite for economic growth and, of course, uh, attractive investment. Uh, that is very a word to us, to all of us in the Greek government. Um, unfortunately, the region and the times we live in uh, are not uh, uh, without their uh, um, complex uh, security challenges. 
and actually, um, I've, I've gone on, on record saying that uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean these days, um, one tends to come across every type of security challenge in the book. Uh, there's there's a intense competition, increasing competition by the uh, big powers, um, geopolitics back uh, uh, and on, on the front of uh, of all main issues in the area there's the recent uh, um uh discovery of uh, of uh, uh, hydrocarbon deposits off the coasts of uh, um israel egypt cyprus that has attracted uh, some more geopolitical let's say um uh, tensions in the area there's uh, uh um, an uh, an influx of uh, of of uh, uh, migratory flows that tends to destabilize countries like Greece, frontier states, states that represent uh, the frontiers of Europe, and uh, attract a lot of pressure from uh, uh, migrants coming in or attempting to come in from the east. There's uh, um, some uh, um, fronts, military fronts that have. Uh, uh, are there in the area? I'm, I'm referring to the Libya front. I'm, the, I'm referring to the Syria front, when, where there's a, a actual military confrontation, and where uh, our inevitable neighbors, Turkey, have uh, exerted their own military footprint. There's uh, the proximity with to the to the um, transport corridors from east to west. Uh, the Eastern Mediterranean is right in the middle of it. There's the necessary element of, uh, of uh, the terrorist threat, especially from uh, um, uh, jihadi elements that have been present in Libya and Syria. And um, there's, uh, there's everything in the book, basically. So um, in our minds, um, uh, the role of Greece in uh, working towards securing uh, relative stability and peace in the region is very important as we go on. Um, now, with respect to uh, the first and foremost uh, aspect of geopolitical competitions, well, I must say, and I'm sorry to point out that uh, to us, the primary source of instability in our region has been Turkey's aggressive and authoritarian strategic posture. Um, it aims to consolidate the presence, its presence and claims in the Eastern Mediterranean and beyond due to its perceived uh, importance as a rising power in the, in, in the region, especially um, in terms of military capabilities. Uh, more specifically, Turkey is implementing a policy of constantly increasing contentions and claims against mostly Greece and Cyprus in the past couple of years um, by embracing a revisionist doctrine known as the Blue Homeland, which seeks to give Ankara control over the waters of the Eastern Aegean Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean, disregarding every Greek island and Greek sovereign rights. Um, for Turkey, its maritime claims in the region are commensurate with the size and perceived importance, as I said, of, of the country. Um, there's a long list of facts that leaves no doubt that Turkey pursues a policy characterized by disrespect uh, of international law and good neighborly relations. There's also an added element of very um, belligerent rhetoric, almost hostile rhetoric, that adds fuel to the tension and does not help the effort of establishing an understanding on the basis of dialogue, dialogue um, between uh, um, uh, uh, good neighbors and uh, credible NATO allies. Um, let me go on with li this list and so that you understand what I'm talking about. Um, there's the ongoing tensions caused by the Turkish-Libyan maritime zone deal, disregarding um, a host of Greek islands, among them the biggest Greek island, that of Crete, uh, uh, Turkish overflights in the Aegean, the seismic research within the exclusive economic zone and territorial uh, waters of Cyprus the successive waves of attempted entry of illegal immigrants in Greece's northeastern border, not far from uh, uh, where I live, where my constituency lies, um, that created a lot of tension this past March. About a year from a year ago, we were uh, very busy deploying 
an array of uh, uh, police and uh, military personnel along our border, which is also Europe's borders, uh, in order to uh, prevent uh, hundreds, actually tens of thousands of people to practically break into the country. Um, there's uh, 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 the conversion of World Heritage Monuments into mosques. There's uh, um, uh, the purchase of Russian weapon systems, the S-400 missile system, which tends to uh, undermine NATO's internal cohesion, something uh, quite important in my mind, and also uh, alienated Turkey vis-a-vis uh, -vis the United States of America and its NATO allies. Um, the list goes on. I should add to that, to that uh, the belligerent rhetoric uh, that, uh, that is almost a, a, a daily uh, situation whenever um, a top official from the Turkish administration goes uh, 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 on record publicly. Um, and last but not least, this past summer, a series of uh, Turkish naftexes um, for illegal service within the Greek uh, the continental shelf, uh, combined with the high mobility, the deployment of the Turkish Navy, almost the entire uh, Turkish Navy, uh, which constituted in my minds, in our minds, um, a serious uh, escalation uh, with uh, very destabilizing ramif ramif ramifications to regional peace. Uh, we had to deploy our our fleet in order to counter the deployment of the entire Turkish fleet. That created created some very tense moments over the summer. Um, we had to uh, do this three times over the course of the summer from late July to mid-October. Um, and and uh, had it not been for uh, um, NATO's intervention and, and, and our allies' uh, strong advice for everybody to stand down, uh, um, I don't know where this would have led. Um, uh, it's, some, it's, it's, it's unacceptable conduct by a NATO ally in our minds it's based on a series of it was based on a series of unilateral actions and we made it very clear that we uh, would not tolerate this type of violation of our sovereign rights we were ready and willing to go to the uh, um, table of to sit down as good neighbors and in good faith to uh, engage in a fruitful dialogue in order to reach an understanding and bridge our differences but in order to have that we would uh, rather uh, um, refrain from uh, any type of unilateral actions and belligerent rhetoric. Uh, over time, there was indeed a de-escalation of these type of tensions. Um, uh, the dialogue is resuming now. We're, we, have, we, 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 we will uh, go to the um, table in a state of restrained optimism, in good faith, in order to try uh, to reach an understanding over our disputes. However, the agenda will be limited and it has to do with the uh, delimitation of our continental shelves and maritime zones. Um, uh, at least that's how we see it. So, uh, really, uh, I would say that some of the rhetoric, including uh, casus belli in case we exercise our legitimate rights uh, and uh, the violation of our national airspace, including overflights, of inhabited islands, get another item on the list I told you about, uh, continue unabated in this time. Uh, however, uh, I would say that in this manner, Turkish actions affect also, uh, to a significant extent, the, United, the interests of the United States of America. Firstly, by providing Russia with the opportunity to deepen its military footprint in the region, and second, by posing new threats to the U.S. allies in this very region. Um, moreover, and that's a dimension that uh, I think is quite important, mercenaries and militants dispatched by Turkey to the conflict zones could include former members of jihadist groups, thus leading in the creation, potential creation of new cells of terrorism. I uh, had the opportunity to uh, um, emphasize that point uh, last October in the uh, NATO ministerial, when Turkey, uh, once again acting unilaterally, um, uh, engaged in military activity in northern Syria, 
in order to drive out from northern Syria um, the, 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 the Kurdish fighters that had fought uh, alongside the U.S. in order to dispose of the jihadists in Syria. The result being um, uh, um, concert, well, uh, camps where jihadists, uh, warriors were held before, uh, uh, were, were taken over by the Turks, and those jihadi warriors were set free once the, the Kurdish captors were driven away. Uh, you understand the ramifications uh, from uh, these actions, and I had the um, well. I, I, I was ready to point them out, and I, I must say that uh, the point uh, I think uh, was very well understood. Now, this is the overall geopolitical situation. Um, Turkey is there whenever there's a military conflict around. We've seen that in Libya. We've seen that in northern Syria. We've seen that in the Caucasus region. region where it took a position uh, in the Nagorno-Karabakh uh, military front uh, in the um, uh, limited confrontation between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Now, um, if that is done in a, in, a, in a unilateral basis without consulting with allies, without uh, engaging in, in, in some sort of uh, um, discussions in order to get permission from NATO, then it's a problem. And it's a problem for every ally in NATO concerned. Um, and of course, it's a problem for the United States of America. And since there seems to be an understanding between Turkey and Russia, Russia and all of that, you, you can also realize uh, how it could be a potential destabilizing agent uh, uh, in the context of peace and stability in the region. We seem to share the same belief with a number of countries that think alike uh, in the region, including Israel, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Cyprus. And uh, we are uh, trying to do our best to reach an understanding, first, with these countries in order to isolate this type of behavior, second, with Turkey, to reach an understanding and um, convince each other that um, working toward peace and stability and not against peace and stability is in our very best mutual region uh, interest in the region. We would like the two shores of the Aegean, the Turkish Asia Minor coast and the Greek coast, to be um, very busy with uh, 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 increasing tourist activity this coming summer, and not yet uh, um, uh, one more time a source of uh, confrontation with uh, the majority of our naval vessels deploying themselves against one another. Now, um, as I said, and in conclusion, Greece seeks bridges of peace, good neighborly relations, and cooperation with all its neighbors. Uh, we are very determined to continue to exercise our full sovereign rights, stemming from international treaties and international law. What is very important is for every agent involved in a, in a region to respect international law, uh, not only um, um, theoretically, but but also in practice. Um, as a member of the United States and NATO, Greece is increasingly stands out as the most stable, credible, and indispensable partner and ally for the other EU member states, as well as the United States and the West in general. Um, we promote defense diplomacy and fruitful regional cooperation on the basis of international law and existing treaties and legitimacy. Um, we also, through a nexus of more multilateral schemes of defense cooperation, uh, we have established together with other states in the region, we are actively encouraging important synergies and practical cooperation with countries I mentioned before, Cyprus, Israel, Egypt, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Um, on a bilateral level, the US, uh, Greece, Greek, unwavering and strategic relationship is the result of a traditionally excellent relations of our people. The two countries, our two peoples, share common values uh, on the principles of freedom, democracy, the rule of law, and open economic, free economic activity, and also respect for international law, um, last but not least. Um, we work to group together to promote peace, stability, cooperation, and prosperity in the region, and the way to prove that is the continuously upgraded 
MDCA, our Mutual Defense Cooperation Agreement, that is currently under revision in order to have a new updated version uh, very shortly from now. I, I believe that we'll be able to uh, have that uh, within the next couple of months um, in order to offer more uh, flexibility and opportunities to deepen our cooperation of the defense and defense technology domain. And what we are doing in essence is we are building a framework of uh, um, commonly used infrastructure on certain locations in Greece, Suda Bay in Crete, a very strategically important um, jewel, I would say, uh, of that uh, of that harbor in Greece. Actually, uh, tomorrow I will board the flight early in the morning with the Prime Minister to go visit the U.S. carrier Dwight Eisenhower. It will be quite an honor and an experience for me. Um, it is Suda Bay is one of the few um, natural harbors, of course, uh, um, with the necessary infrastructure as well uh, that are, can can accommodate. Um, a vessel of the size of an aircraft carrier of the U.S. fleet. So that will happen tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to it, really. Um, Suda Bay, indeed, uh, Larissa in central Greece, the port of Alexandroupolis in our northeastern border, uh, where uh, uh, we, we, are, we, are, uh, we have uh, ceded uh, the partial use of a pier of that uh, port in order for... Uh, um, logistics operation to be conducted by the U.S. military. Um, very important uh, that 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 port at uh, our northeastern uh, shore, uh, port of Alexandroupolis, and a number a number of other locations we are working on right now with our American American partners in order to add them um, to the amendment of the MDCA. So this um, common infrastructure we are developing actually leads. Uh, to a commonality of interests, uh, mutual interests that uh, uh, affect both parties and actually is the base and the proof of our uh, deepening and, uh, and enhancing strategic relations. In this light, uh, we do consider that a stable and secure environment can only benefit the countries of the broader region. The financial implications relating to the discovered and potential natural reserves will in turn upgrade the socio-economic structure of the communities, an outcome that will further strengthen stability and promote prosperity from every country, provided that the general framework of um, allegiance to international law and good neighborly relations is, uh, is, is adhered by all parties concerned. This is our vision, this is our basic position. Um, this is the position of Greece, and uh, in that respect, uh, I do believe that uh, um, Greece has turned into the most reliable and stable in terms of overall behavior, partner the region, not only for Europe, the European Union, but uh, for, for the U.S. We are looking forward uh, uh, into engaging with the new administration. I must welcome the fact that uh, the footprint, the geopolitical footprint of the new administration seems uh, to be enhanced in the region, will be enhanced in the region. This is a very uh, welcome development as far as we are concerned. Um, and we are looking forward to uh, actually getting to discuss um, a new dimension in our strategic relationship and uh, more uh, amendments to the MDCA as well as ways and means uh, for the United States uh, of America to assist Greece in playing that role of reliable frontier state and uh, um, a secure, net security provider and a stable partner in the region uh, within the um, NATO framework, the bilateral framework, and the European framework. Um, well, Mr. Minister. <laughs> thank you so much. Let's leave some, uh, some well, questions. Huh? I thank you for that sweeping overview. I think you probably answered just about every question that I had prepared to ask you. So uh, let me see where I can take it from. <laughs> that was a plan from the, from the beginning. <laughs> uh, well, look, it goes without a question. Uh, your biggest uh, challenge uh, in the region, unfortunately, happens to be a, a NATO member called Turkey, which is very unfortunate. 
and that you're both in a, in a military alliance and your neighbors, they continue to act in a very provocative way regarding Greece's sovereignty and do not recognize uh, Greece's uh, territorial integrity under international law, which we can go on for you know weeks to talk about those issues. But you know, from here at the American Atlantic Institute, obviously, the U.S.-Greek relationship to us is of paramount importance, and I'm sure it is to you. You expounded on it. Uh, I will try to maybe incorporate a couple of questions that I had here. Even though you alluded to some of them, maybe you can be a little bit more specific. Uh, specifically, you know, you've had a number of uh, joint military exercises uh, with the United States and other partners in the region, but with the United States, uh, it's been much more uh, uh, prolific, I would say, within the last year. As you mentioned, that the White Eisenhower well, took part in the exercises and went into Suda Bay Harbor, and you're going to visit there tomorrow. You have well, There is a new administration. There is a new Congress. I know you're looking forward to come over here, but nonetheless, you know, uh, there are other things, you know, that you're looking for from the United States, I would say. What are those things, to be a little bit more specific, uh, as, as it relates to the defense cooperation, how further more specifically do you think it can be strengthened as it relates specifically to the bilateral relationship? Well, I've uh, um, tried to uh, explain the MDCA. Um, the MDCA is the basis because uh, it proves to everybody that uh, Greece comes in to offer things um, and accommodate uh, the United States of America on the, in the context of a um, defense-related agreement. But there's more than that. Uh, I agree with you totally. Uh, once we have the opportunity to uh, um, engage with our uh, American partners, hopefully from a, a visit that will take place soon enough, COVID permitting, of course. I mean, we've had lots of uh, delays uh, in those visits because of COVID considerations. It's understandable. Uh, but uh, I do believe that sometime over the summer, uh, I'll have the opportunity to visit and uh, meet and discuss with my uh, 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 with my with my with the uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, the United States Secretary Austin, and also engage with uh, Congress and the Senate on on what could be done furthermore, and also engage with other agents of the administration. Um, I would say that in the in the field of uh, um, assisting Greece with its uh, sweeping uh, attempt to re uh, revamp our armed forces, our entire armed forces, uh, the, US, the U.S. would play a major role. Of course, uh, the United States of America and American companies are the major suppliers of weapon systems for, for Greece. Uh, I, there's no need to mention Lockheed Martin and what we're doing with our F-16 fleet, among others. Uh, uh, we would be interested in, uh, in exploring opportunities in the realm of uh, um, foreign military sales, the FMS contracts, uh, foreign military funding, uh, since funding is uh, quite an important aspect uh, in, all, in all of that. The EDA, the FS defense articles, we would explore opportunities for Greece to acquire some systems that are not currently used by the United States Armed Forces. And also the IMED program, which is the International Military Education Training Program and uh, provides funds for military um, education training in, uh, in, in members of our armed forces. I believe we could, we could expand uh, on these issues on the basis that the ongoing strategic relationship is better than it has ever been before. And I, I'm, I'm using... I'm using the words of uh, the, uh, the very active American ambassador uh, in Athens, uh, my good friend, Ambassador Jeffrey Pai. Uh, when he goes on, uh, he goes on the record saying that it's never been uh, as, good, as good as it is now. Um, that's quite a statement for us. And our task, you know, the way I see it is to uh, improve on that, on that impressive record. And I see, uh, all the grounds uh, uh, that could make it happen. Um, the potential is there. The sky is the limit. Uh, it's it's very good that the, it seems that the United States understands the important, geostrategic important uh, 
uh, of Greece right now, the reliability of Greece versus the unpredictability of other agents and mainly Turkey, uh, based on a series of, of, uh, of, of facts, as I've tried to explain to you before. Um, and, and in that context, I believe that uh, uh, the realization on, on behalf of the United States that Greece is the reliable partner is a very important development uh, that opens um, uh, the door to uh, realizing the full potential of this strategic relation on the grounds that I've described. Well, absolutely, and Mr. Minister, I agree with you. And with the IMAP program, I am happy to mention to our audience that we at the American Hellenic Institute uh, take pride in when we identify that uh, the IMF program from, for Greece a couple of years ago, you can put on somebody's credit card. It was about $200,000. We were able to work with our friends on Capitol Hill and raise it to a million where it is today. And we need to get it at least to 1.5 million and hopefully maybe to 2 million uh, in the next budget. Additionally, it's important again for our audience to know that through the National Defense Authorization budget uh, that passed last year, $50 million was authorized for upgrades to Suda Bay uh, specifically for infrastructure projects, and that, of course, is very important. But if I may, t you know, take on the theme of the United States, there are other areas, though, that I think the United States should be looking to try to assist Greece as it relates to its security as, it's, as in the interest of the United States. And that is as it relates, again, to our, to our friend, Turkey. You mentioned it earlier, but let me put some numbers to it. Turkey engaged in, in Greece, you know, egregious violation of Greece's uh, territorial wars and airspace. 7,000 violations in 2020, combined territorial and airspace. I'll let the people out there with the math degrees figure out how many that is a day. It is a lot. Uh, but 4,605 of those were airspace and 3,215 were maritime. Every time that happens, we contest here at the American Lenic Institute, that violates U.S. laws under the Foreign Assistance Act and, and under the Arms Export Control Act, because of these are these are uh, American-made systems. Uh, <laughs> therefore, immediately Turkey should be ineligible uh, for any further military assistance and sanctions under the law. Do you engage your U.S. counterparts to remind them of their responsibility regarding these actions by Turkey? And how do you ask the United States to assist you as it relates to these egregious violations by a NATO member? Well, whenever I have the opportunity, um, of course, I, I, I do emphasize these points. Um, I'd, I'd like to say, you know, um, by that, that, that Greece is running the most expensive uh, training program for, for uh, uh, its fighter pilots because, uh, well, repeatedly during the same day, they have to... Uh, uh, fly and, uh, and and intercept uh, invading uh, Turkish fighters over the islands of the Aegean, our airspace, uh, not to mention inhabited islands, and it's quite expensive. It's uh, well in the range of uh, ten million dollars every year. No, more than that actually. Oh, more than that. It's about five hundred to five hundred thousand a year. Now, 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 but, uh, well, the, the the negative aspect of that training program that it also Trains the other the other guys as well, but but, but then again, you know, it's uh, it's it's actually uh, a fact of everyday life um, in 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 the day of uh, the Greek fighter pilot. Yes, it's a problem, and and at times it's uh, it's gotten too much. I've had the opportunity to uh, reach out to my Turkish counterpart and 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 ask him to refrain from such activities. Uh, I even got to the point of. Uh, 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 telling him that it's a total waste of food fuel for both of us, you know, fuel and funds as well. But uh, it seems that uh, it goes on unabated, as I said. Uh, even now, when uh, the two parties are trying to engage in some sort of dialogue over the preliminary talks after the uh, summer's um, uh, overdrawn tension, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm within the NATO framework, within the framework of engaging uh, bilaterally with uh, uh, American officials, um, we are always bringing that subject up. Uh, also, I must say, 
and 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 I I I must uh, uh, mention this very particular di dimension. It's dangerous. It's dangerous because it uh, entails the increased possibility of an accident, since it is taking place within a restricted airspace. Um, you know, it's not uh, the wide open skies of uh, above the Pacific. It's the Aegean. It's a closed sea with many islands, with many um, commercial flights taking place, especially in the summer months. With uh, the summer months, uh, with uh, increased tourist season and having fighters intercepting one another over inhabited islands, you know, uh, it, it might uh, create increased possibilities of an accident happening. Oh, so it's in the interest of both parties to refrain from such activities. Without a doubt, Mr. Minister, time is, is close to running out. I do have, I had a number of questions. I have two more questions. Yes. If we can, as close as a, a short response. Uh, you, you may have mentioned, I think you, you did mention it. Uh, Greece is making a, a huge investment commitment to upgrade its major, major weapon systems. You just purchased uh, 18 Raphael jets from France to replace the old Mirage fleet. Approximately, I believe, around $3 billion. I think an, an LOR has gone in for as many as potentially 30 F-35s. Uh, these are the fighter, these are the new generation uh, uh, joint fighter strike force planes that are made by Lockheed Martin. And I know you're also looking to procure as many as four uh, new frigates, new class of frigates. This is an enormous amount of uh, expenditures for a country the size of Alabama and the budget of uh, Tennessee. Uh, what is your timeline for this? Well, inevitably, in order to uh, increase uh, the deterrent element of our armed forces, we have to uh, upgrade our existing systems and also um, uh, get uh, uh, a series of new weapon systems that uh, cater to our needs. Um, in that respect, I want to make that very clear. Uh, uh, the, the objective is to... Uh, increase the capability of our armed forces and in that way increase the our overall uh, deterrent capabilities. We're not intending to go to war with the new frigates or the new planes, but in order to achieve deterrence, avoid war through that. Um, in, in that respect, we have uh, embarked on a very ambitious and comprehensive plan to upgrade our armed forces in their entirety. The, ba the basic uh, programs that are uh, um, in place right now is, uh, apart from the recent procurement of 18 Rafale aircraft from our French partners, is the uh, um, uh, upgrade, upgrade of, our, of 84 aircraft of our F-16 fleet into the Viper edition. That would, all, would probably pave the way for the future acquisition of uh, F-35 aircraft, but that has yet to be budgeted. You know that our financial capabilities are not indefinite. They are actually limited, and the COVID situation and the impact of our in our economy uh, does not make things any easier. Uh, uh, the major program that affects uh, uh, the capabilities of our Navy is up next, and it is, as you said correctly, the procurement of um, or multiple road frigates by our Amelic Navy, as well as the uh, midlife um, upgrade of, uh, of uh, another four of our MECO class uh, frigates that are in service right now. So we've got eight naval vessels, eight frigates, four new ones and four refurbished ones that hopefully will be in service within the next uh, uh, six to seven years if we make that decision soon enough. Right now, the Navy is, is uh, evaluating a series of very attractive proposals. One of them has come from the United States of America. Um, right now, we are uh, expecting um, uh, the, the completion of that proposal by the, the US government. Uh, and, and we will be able to make a decision within the next two to three months maximum. Excellent. Uh, it's something that's very important because uh, we must admit here that Turkey has made a lot of progress with its defense industry, has made a lot of progress with revamp 
revamping its 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 navy. The Mavivatan, the, the the blue homeland concept, is based on a strong naval presence. That but we are in no particular uh, mood to uh, make any concessions with respect to uh, our sovereign rights in in the in the Aegean. Uh, and in that respect, we do need uh, to have a, um, a navy with uh, great capabilities. We are counting on the quality of our personnel, uh, demonstrated this past summer, I must say. Uh, but, but, but we also have to make the necessary, take the necessary measures to provide them with the best um, platforms in order to operate from. So the next big decision with respect to our uh, um, extensive revamping program of our armed forces will have to be the core frigate uh, of the Hellenic Navy. We also have to refurbish our fleet of uh, submarines. We're uh, actually pushing a lot of programs that uh, have to do with refurbishing our land forces, um, also our, uh, our artillery, our guided missiles programs, and um, the whole lot. Um, it's a lot of money, but uh, we've budgeted that. We've made a very comprehensive plan. We've uh, um, set forward our priorities, and uh, little by little, we're making it happen. And as I said, it's not in that because of the fact that uh, we've become very belligerent in Greece as of late. But we do want to uh, um, uh, uh, increase our our deterrent capabilities, and 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 by that, uh, make sure that. Uh, uh, everybody in Greece feels and actually is secure. And when that happens, then everything else follows. Um, everything else follows with respect to economic growth and, uh, and and stability and prosperity. That's our vision. Well, and uh, to use a sports analogy, the best offense is the good defense. And I think the, the 2004 soccer team of Greece displayed that uh, in, their, in their European Cup victory in 2004. Last question, uh, Mr. Minister, if I may. Uh, on the viewers today are many, many business people, people who potentially be looking to invest. Um, maybe they haven't thought about Greece as a potential for investment. So take off your defense ministry hat for a second and put on your, come on and bring me your capital, your, your masses, your investment to, uh, to, to Greece. Uh, New Democracy's cornerstone was one of these particular platforms, and that is to increase FDI, which is still very lacking in Greece, federal, you know, uh, foreign, foreign direct investment. You mentioned Alexandroupolis and all the other areas. We talked about uh, the $1 billion Microsoft uh, project uh, that was announced in 2020 for three data centers uh, outside of the, of, of the greater Athens area. And from the United States perspective, uh, more interest uh, has been engaged from the defense finance cooperation in trying to assist Greece in this regard. So in, 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 a, in a minute or two, what would you say to our audience who are looking for somewhere internationally to invest and bring in direct investment, okay, to build brick and mortar, okay, in Greece and to provide jobs and investment and a great return for an investor? What would you say to that person, Mr. Minister? Well, first of all, I would say that Greece has all the right elements to attract invest, investment for abroad, from abroad. It has a great location, very strategically location between East and West. It has um, decent infrastructures. It has great weather uh, and it has uh, excellent human capital. Um, and also, last but not least, it boasts a government that is very pro-business, believes in the open economy, takes measures and uh, in, uh, implements reforms in order to assist uh, 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 this type of environment and uh, also supports uh, the, the enjoys the support of the of the, of the Greek people for doing that. Uh, so, in a nutshell, I think the elements are there. Once we make sure that uh, enough security is provided for a potential investor to come in and uh, invest without fear of, uh, of instability uh, um, uh, taking over in the overall environment, I think uh, 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 there, is, uh, there is a lot of uh, potential here. And once 
actually we get past the uh, um, this this horrible situation with COVID. We expect that to happen within the summer. We're actually uh, well. We are projecting on a relative increase of the tourist activity since we've taken enough measures uh, for the tourist uh, the tourist market market to open up. Uh, then I think it will be um, downhill. The, 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 the potential is there. Um, Greece is ready. Uh, we just hope that uh, the overall environment of the global economy helps out a little bit. Uh, we believe in the theory of the of the of the, of the uh, um, spring factor. You know, the Greek economy, like other economies that have suffered from COVID globally, has been suppressed for a while. But uh, once the spring is released, then the, there will be a huge uh, leap forward. And that is the vision of Prime Minister Mitsotakis. Um, you know, he's never been shy about expressing. Um, there is a master plan uh, under implementation right now, and all the right elements are there. I, from the point of view of the Ministry of Defense, I, I, I'm also very optimistic for, over the prospects of developing our defense industry. You know, a domestic defense industry that is active and productive. Um, is also a springboard, a springboard for growth. And in that respect, this past year, we've been very active, engaging with partners uh, from Israel, from the United States of America, uh, from, uh, from Europe, in order to uh, um, exploit you know, all the room of, of improvement with, for our domestic um, uh, um, defense industry. We had a, a, a state-owned uh, enterprise taken over by an Israeli company. It has to do with uh, uh, land systems. It will probably at some day, at some point, produced a vehicle that will be used by our land forces. We are um, looking for investors. A tender is underway for our um, uh, Skaramanga shipyards, and and I do believe that uh, we will have uh, positive developments within the next three months. Uh, we are doing all we can in order to uh, upgrade our uh, defense industry infrastructure, but the overall uh, um, uh, image of the Greek economy. And I think all the right elements are there. Uh, it's a question of timing, and I think that time is, uh, is fastly approaching for that to happen. Well, Mr. Minister, Greece has certainly proven itself to be a very reliable and faithful ally regarding its uh, defense interests, uh, that of the United States, of, of, of NATO, uh, and, 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 and has always worked very closely to promote those geostrategic interests and to promote peace and stability in a very critically important part of the world. That track record is admirable, uh, and you should be congratulated, of course, but Greece, throughout its modern history, should be congratulated for the work that is done in this regard, it has always been on the side of the United States in every major campaign in the 20th and 21st century, and not that many countries other than three others can make that statement. So for that and for so much more, uh, Greece is doing what he can regarding uh, defense security, but also now it looks to try to promote also investment opportunities, which I think it is in a great position. This government obviously is the kind of government that promotes uh, this, ki this kind of investment. Uh, the, Hellenicon, the Hellenicon project is, is, a, is a 10 billion plus project, the largest in Europe, and we look forward to the development of that particular project as well as you continue to move forward. But last but not least, we want to congratulate you, the people of Greece, for in two days you celebrate a landmark in modern Greek history amongst its two and a half thousand history of extraordinary accomplishments. Modern Greece has a lot to be proud for as well. And on uh, March 25th, in just two days' time, Greece celebrates its 200th anniversary from the Ottoman Empire. And unfortunately, the ancestors of that empire continue to cause you problems today. But you're in a much better position uh, to, to, to be able to uh, deal with it, as you do within the context of not being aggressive, you know, uh, but being within the context of international law and try to resolve your differences within the guise of international law and the rule of law. So for that, we congratulate you, the people of Greece, 
Zito Elada, Zito to Ethnos, Zito Lefteria. Mr. Minister, on behalf of uh, IDGen and the Global Summit, it's been a tremendous pleasure to uh, moderate this uh, discussion with you here today. And I look forward to seeing you sometime in the near future. Wishing you uh, all the best. Thank you to our audience. And I wish everyone a good day. 200 years, uh, that's a uh, bicentennial anniversary. It's huge for Greece. Uh, we hope this is uh, the celebration that unfortunately will not be the type of celebration we'd like to have, but uh, we, we can't have it any other way because of COVID and all the restrictions. I hope this is uh, this becomes a very symbolic springboard from uh, for a new day for Greece. And and since you said uh, you mentioned uh, uh, my friend Nikos that uh, uh, we've been all uh, we've been going all along. Uh, with the United States fought together. Let me tell you something, just a small story and, 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 and uh, sign off on this. Um, I, I was addressing a, an audience made up of military personnel, among them uh, a few American distinguished guests. And in my speech, I dared, I dared to mention that, you know, in the past, Greeks and Americans have bled side by side, by side in great wars, in the Second World War, in the War of Korea, and the Korean campaign. Um, and that's what we'll do again. We're willing to do again because we've always been on the same camp and we've always proved that to each other. Well, my statement created some of a political fuss. Um, I took some stick from the Communist Party. But, uh, you know, when I thought about it, I, 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 I thought it's not such a bad thing after all. You know, I, I'd rather take that as a compliment. Absolutely. But there you have it. You know, we've bled together in the past and we we'll probably bleed again whenever the, the situation or the necessity arises. Thank you again, Mr. Minister. Thank this you. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.